We're having a good week here at the city of San Diego. Uh, since last we gathered, uh, we had a unanimous vote of the California Coastal Commission for our Convention Center Phase 3 expansion. I can't believe that was only a week ago, but it was. It was a great day for our city. Uh, in keeping with that, uh, our focus uh, is, remains on uh, our binational relationship uh, with Mexico. Uh, I asked a team of city leaders to meet with their counterparts in Tijuana, uh, and yesterday a delegation including the Director of Binational Affairs, the Director of Legislative Affairs, the City's Planning Director, and representatives from our Public Utilities Department, Office of Homeland Security, and Environmental Services Department all traveled to Tijuana. Uh, yesterday's meeting was primarily focused on introductions and departmental overviews with key discussions on stormwater uh, issues on both sides of the border, as well as a discussion of future opportunities with regard to emergency preparedness and long-term projects like the very important San Ysidro Port of Entry expansion. Uh, Tijuana Mayor Bustamante and I are committed to ensuring our relationship uh, between our two governments is as collaborative as possible. Uh, our next roundtable meeting uh, will be in February, and I will be hosting that here in San Diego. Of course, there's plenty of work to be done on our side of the border as well. Uh, when I developed my staff, uh, we, we focused our team on community outreach efforts. Uh, now they're actually reaching out to the community, uh, attending neighborhood meetings, and finding out how best to serve uh, our, ci our citizens and our city. Uh, in the past six weeks, representatives from my office have participated in 52 uh, community meetings, as well as many more neighborhood events, touching each of the nine council districts and working closely with the council members and their staffs to address a variety of concerns. Uh, in short, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting the business of our neighborhoods done. Uh, I've always prioritized being accessible to the people I represent, and from attending meetings uh, and events in different neighborhoods, using social media, and spreading information via hard copy, email newsletters, and events like this, uh, I know we're making better decisions uh, because we're informed on the views of San Diegans. Uh, as a council member and as council president, I regularly held ca uh, casual coffee and cocktail events in my council district to provide brief updates and to be accessible to uh, my constituents. Tonight uh, at Hess Brewing in North Park, uh, we are hosting a micro brews with the mayor event. Um, members of the public are welcome and they're encouraged to attend. Uh, the event will be from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, so please come, have a beer with the mayor. Uh, a major topic that I'm depending on public input for right now is our infrastructure needs. Uh, I mentioned uh, previously that this winter, working with Councilmember Mark Kersey, uh, I plan on bringing forward a bond issuance to continue our city's investment in our deferred capital needs. Councilmember Kersey and the Infrastructure Committee, which he chairs, are also developing a five-year infrastructure uh, and, uh, financing plan. A key part of that uh, in the development is uh, a key part of developing that plan, of course, is public input. Next week, we'll uh, kick off a series of public meetings held throughout the city uh, in, in, in the best council district of all, District 3. Uh, the meeting will be uh, on October 22nd from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Balboa Park Club uh, in the Santa Fe Room. Uh, of course, that's an opportunity for the public to come in and weigh in on what they want to see on how we can, uh, with regard to rebuilding our neighborhoods. Uh, I also want to highlight a few items uh, that will be of interest uh, that will appear on the Land Use and Housing Committee's uh, agenda for next Wednesday, October 23rd. Uh, the committee will have a discussion uh, on the regulation of food trucks. Uh, city staff will get input from committee members, uh, San Diegans, food truck operators, and other stakeholders uh, that they can use to help develop uh, potential amendments to the city for the City Council's consideration. Uh, they'll also uh, consider a proposal from myself and Councilmember Emerald uh, for the formation of a utility underground advisory group uh, as as well as the uh, an update to the inter, uh, uptown interim height limit uh, all three of these issues food trucks utility undergrounding and height limit uh, are greatly impact our neighborhoods and I encourage San Diegans and the media to participate in that public hearing uh, finally uh, before I get to your questions I want to tease an event that's happening later today uh, I'll be celebrating a fun sporting event right here in our great city uh, so I invite you to Vieja Serena at San Diego State University at 1 p.m. Uh, for what will surely be a light mayoral moment. I will just tell you it involves a really big belt and some wrestlers. Uh, so with that, does anyone have any questions for me? Seeing none? Terrific. Oh, do you? Okay. Uh, the, the mayoral race, what kind of policies uh, with the candidates? You, we've seen a whole mm -hmm. wide range of, uh, of policies by the ma three major candidates. What would you like to see pushed as we go forward into the, uh, the, the primary election and then probably the general election? 
questions on the mayoral race, candidates are putting forward their policy plans and positions, and what would I like to see uh, from those candidates. Uh, I personally believe that infrastructure is the largest uh, challenge facing our city and the one for which we don't have the comprehensive plan that we need in order to tackle it. Uh, if you look at how we had, uh, addressed employee compensation, specifically pension reform, uh, that was a multi-year effort that took a lot of uh, work with our, uh, our unions uh, through the meet and confer process and engaging the public through the initiative process. Uh, that uh, effort has led to a situation where we are now looked at in terms of cutting edge when it comes to reform on that subject. We need the same level of attention, the same level of passion, the same level of effort uh, on our infrastructure problem. And that problem, uh, in my estimation, uh, is larger uh, than our pension obligations, and yet we don't have a great plan for it. Uh, I, what I would caution the public on, uh, though, of course, is uh, how do you pay for this? And obviously, within the context of a campaign, it's difficult for a candidate to say very specifically how they choose to do it. Um, but I'd hope that the candidates would prioritize infrastructure as an issue and then be really direct and honest about how they intend to pay for it. Uh, they certainly will have uh, a council president that will help them in addressing uh, that problem. In, in the interim between now and the time that uh, a new mayor is elected, mm -hmm. what can you do um, as the interim mayor to, to put forward those policies to encourage those kinds of Policy. Well, we are doing that, and so the question is, what are we doing in the interim on if I believe infrastructure is such a, a significant issue? And it's what I referenced a moment ago, uh, working currently uh, with Councilmember Kersey, the chair of our infrastructure committee, uh, mind you, a committee that didn't exist uh, a year ago, but one that I created as council president uh, to focus attention on this issue, uh, working collaboratively with him and our city staff to develop a bond issuance that we'll offer uh, around the new year uh, that would be roughly $100 million uh, for neighborhood infrastructure projects road repairs, storm drains, public facilities. Um, that's a, a down payment, if you will. It's a step toward uh, addressing this issue. Um, but the, it, the problem itself is much more significant. Um, Mr. Kersey is trying to address that by developing a multi-year plan on identifying needs, priorities, and then again, how do you finance them? But ultimately, again, I think the size of the overall problem is larger than what we can control within our current resources. Uh, and again, it's going to take, uh, I think, significant civic leadership, of which, of course, a mayor would have to be on the leading edge of. Uh, and uh, so we will do what we can so that when the new mayor comes in in March, uh, they will have ha see some progress, um, but they're going to need to take, pick up the ball and run with it. And again, I think that between myself and Councilmember Kersey and every, really every member of the council, they're going to have willing partners to try and uh, tackle this problem. Um, but this is a problem that you, you know, I don't have to sell you on it. Uh, you can talk to any San Diegan. They're gonna, they'll tell you that the roads in their neighborhood uh, are not up, uh, up to code, that the sidewalk in front of their house is probably busted, uh, that their library is probably inadequate. So everyone sees this on a day-to-day -day basis in their own lives. Um, the question is, what is City Hall doing to address it? We're doing a few things, but we need to do more. And again, I think that comes with executive leadership. Back in the, uh, in the, in the going back to the 2012 election, Bonnie Dumas, had, as part of her mayoral campaign, she had to put together a plan to create a whole system of, of keeping track of where infrastructure needs are, mm -hmm. what has already been done to avoid some of the overlap. Is there any thought to, to do it? It was based on a system computer system that they had, she said, in the DA's office. Hmm. thought to doing something similar. I'm not familiar with Ms. Dumanis' uh, uh, proposal, but we are doing a better job of coordinating some of our efforts. Last year, the council adopted a street preservation ordinance. Uh, they got to that concern about coordination of efforts. Uh, you know, the taxpayers would be rightfully upset uh, if, when, if and when we paved a road only to uh, tear it up a few weeks later to do some other city project. Coordination of that through the use of IT is being done, and I think we're uh, more likely to avoid those kinds of, of uh, uh, unfortunate uh, lack of coordination. Of course, there's always emergencies that happen, uh, often as a relation to our lack of infrastructure. You know, if you pave a street, but then the water pipe that's underneath it, you know, bursts, of course we're going to dig into that street. Again, it calls for the coordinated and more aggressive uh, approach, but I get, uh, to the point about whether or not we're coordinating, I think we're doing that better than we used to. Uh, it is through the use of IT and better collaboration between our different city departments uh, that have responsibilities with regard to infrastructure. Uh, we could always do better, we could always do more, uh, but again, my, my concern um, in terms of uh, where our risk is at, um, is less to do with coordination. I think what we have to do is to become more efficient as an organization so that I can tell you uh, that the road that we're paving, uh, repaving, is being done at the most efficient and cost-effective level, and we're putting in some reforms to, to, uh, to do that. Uh, prioritizing, really inviting the public in to tell us what they want done. I suspect that there are projects that the city would like to do or has on the books that perhaps isn't a priority for the community. If that's the case, you know, that's some savings.
means right there. And then lastly, again, is how do you actually finance this? And I believe that the size of our problem far exceeds our financial abilities. And if that's the case, then we have to have a more frank discussion with the public. Anyone else? Very good. Thank you very much. We'll see you back here next week. Thank you.